Starting off this countdown, we have the deer head. Posted on Reddit by RipeOTCDXVI, they claim to be a forest ranger at Yellowstone National Park. One day, they were out exploring a part of the park called Lamar Valley, which is about 11 miles from the nearest road. While on the trail, they stumbled upon something very shocking a perfectly severed deer head. There was no blood whatsoever, and it was cut off with precision. Now, obviously, since this is a park, Rangers come across dead animals all the time, but never in such perfect condition. Also, the head was completely uneaten. So now the question is, who did this? Why did they do this? How did they do this? Moving on to number nine, we have the abandoned tent. Reddit user Not So Single Buck was at work one day when he came across a campsite that was set outside of the designated campsite area, which is against the rules of the park, so he went to investigate. In the tent, he found a sleeping bag, some dirty clothes, lots of canned food, and a teddy bear. The whole tent smelled of cigarette smoke. There was nothing that he could do though until the individual returned. He didn't want to wait all day so he just took the open food to prevent animals from being attracted to it and left a note explaining where he had taken the food and why. Two weeks later he returned to the tent and it had remained untouched. As a result, him and his team cleared out the tent. Whatever happened to the person staying in the tent remains a huge mystery. Did a wild animal get to them? Did they fall off a cliff? A body was never found, so we may never know. Coming in at number eight, we have the wolf pack. This story happened three years ago by an old timey forest ranger that worked in Montana. He was out roaming around on his ATV when he saw an older lady in the distance. She was screaming as six wolves closed in around her. The ranger drove down to her as fast as he could, yelling and honking, trying to scare away the wolves. But when he got there, she was nowhere to be found. The only sign of her was a single ring with a black stone which was on the ground where the woman was standing. Seems like the wolves got to her and carried her away. Coming in at number seven, we have the strange blue light. This person used to work as a ranger at Philmont Scout Ranch in New Mexico. There's a place on this ranch that is said to be haunted. There's a number of urban legends surrounding this place like, oh it's the portal to the underworld, or it's home to an ancient cursed burial ground, you get it. There's also this very eerie legend saying that on some nights, blue lights can be seen. One story claims that a hiker saw an eerie figure on the trail. The figure was tall and emitting a blue light. Well, legend goes that the blue lights are coming from a shaman that guards the ground. Anyways, obviously these are just legends, right? Well, one night the ranger was out with a scout troop when they saw a bunch of weird lights coming from a trail. These were the infamous blue lights talked about in multiple legends. Everyone was so freaked out that they got out of there as fast as they could. Now, let's just say that they're all believers. In our sixth spot, we have these skinned animals. So a couple of years ago, two forest rangers were on their way to a far location when it got dark out. As a result, they had to camp overnight. But during the night, they were woken up by the sound of footsteps right outside of their tent. All of a sudden, they heard a number of people yell, get out. The two rangers packed up as fast as they could and got the hell out of there. The next morning, the cops went to check out the area and found four skinned animals nailed to the trees surrounding their campsite. Okay, that is horrifying and I have a number of questions. Number one, who the heck were these people? Number two, what were they doing there? Number three, what the heck? And number four, what the heck? Seriously, that is so messed up. Were they doing some satanic ritual and the forest rangers ruined it or what? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Wendigo. Imagine going out camping with some friends and encountering a Wendigo during your trip. Wouldn't that be insane and terrifying, like if you agree. Well, this happened to a forest ranger and a bunch of his friends. So the group went out camping and all was going well, until the second night. During the night, all four of the men woke up to a loud, high-pitched scream. They assumed it was just the coyote. But the next morning, they were in for a surprise. By their campsite, they found a bunch of animal guts everywhere. The ranger described it as if there was a bomb in an animal and then it went off. There were just fur, blood, and flesh everywhere. That night is when they came across the monster that devoured the animal. They were out investigating a sound when they saw a weird tall figure move in the distance. It was about six feet tall and did not look like an animal and did not look like a human. When the creature spotted the men, it took off in a flash. They believe that they encountered a Wendigo. 
when to go, when to go, when to go. <laughs> Coming in at number four, we have the man in the woods. This next individual was a park ranger on a small island. The island could only be accessed by a private boat. During the summer, there would be hordes of people there. But during the off season, the ranger would be the only one on the island. One night, the ranger decided to take a hike around the entire island. Yeah, at night, when it's dark. He thought it would be a fun challenge for himself. Plus, there was no cell or internet service, so you know, what else could you really do? While he was out on his hike, he heard a noise coming from behind him. He turned around and standing behind him was a crazy old man. He was a super pale and super tall man with dark hair. The man gave out a creepy smile and then cackled. The ranger ran for his life and this crazy man ran after him until the ranger made it back safely to his cabin. In the morning, he went back on the trail he had been on and there were no sets of other footprints, only his own, as if the man had never been there at all. Moving on to number three, we have the polar bears. So this next individual was a park ranger in the northern part of Ontario, Canada. In the middle of the night, she woke up to hear something outside of her tent. She opened her eyes and saw the head of a polar bear peeking into her tent. Imagine waking up and seeing that thing breathing in your face. Like, what would you do? Well, the correct answer is don't panic and don't frighten the bear. Thankfully, that's what the ranger did. She stayed calm and eventually the bear left the tent. That could have ended much worse for this woman. She got lucky. Like, I think I would have peed myself, seriously. In our second spot, we have the river accident. A man named Kevin Uxbridge used to be a ranger at Yosemite. One day, he was making his way through the gate, which was along a river, when he heard a huge commotion. People were yelling and screaming and crying. Well, turns out there was a husband and wife standing by the river. The husband was taking a picture of his wife and kept telling her to back up, back up, you know, so he could get a good shot. Well, she ended up backing up too far and she fell into the river. The river was pretty violent that day, so within seconds, she was swept under. It took the ranger and firefighters two months before they could find her body. The worst part, her body was found in the swimming hole when the river had settled. People were swimming in there just days before they found her. And in our number one spot, we have the ghostly body. This next story comes from a trail ranger. One time, he noticed that there was a bunch of illegally placed wildlife cameras around, so he went around taking them down. Things were going well until he started hearing a bunch of weird voices. He hopped back on his ATV, but the battery was disconnected, so he couldn't drive off. He was then stuck there waiting for someone to pick him up. They were an hour away and it was getting dark. He decided to sit down and make a small fire. Before he knew it, the voices were back, this time getting louder and louder. Finally, he could hear what was being said. It was two hunters arguing over a kill. That's when all of a sudden he heard a loud bang. It was a gunshot. After that, he smothered the fire and hid until his coworkers arrived. The next day, the two came back with the police to investigate the area. After about an hour of looking, they came across a shallow grave. In it, they found a dead man who had been shot in the face. The freakiest part? It was just the skeleton of the man. He had been there for years. So it seems like he heard ghosts reenacting the murder that happened years ago or something like that. I don't know, it is so freaky. Starting off this countdown, we have the missing hunter. In December of 2020, a 45 year old hunter was deemed missing after not returning from an afternoon hunt. Two rangers were sent out into the forest to go look for this man. All throughout the night on December 4th, the rangers looked for him. They found tracks and some personal items left by this hunter, but the hunter himself was nowhere to be found. Early in the morning, they were joined by four more rangers to help search through the thick and swampy forest. Just after 3.03 PM, the hunter Hunter was found, sadly not alive. He was found in Shaker Mountain Wild Forest. The cause of death is still unknown. Everyone was hoping that this wasn't going to be the outcome. But sadly, what they feared the most came true. In our ninth spot today, we have the aliens. This forest ranger almost got beamed up by a damn UFO spacecraft. Sounds crazy, right? Let me explain. So it was the middle of the night and the ranger was in his cabin chilling when all of a sudden he heard this weird electronic sound coming from outside. He described it as a mixture of TV static and a high pitched ringing sound. He followed the sound to the middle of the woods and all of a sudden he was surrounded by this bright blue light. He says it was so blinding that he could barely see. He looked up and swear he saw a big silver craft hovering above him. He was so scared he ran back to his cabin and locked himself 
itself inside. The light stayed in the spot in the woods for a couple of minutes before disappearing. So like, what is that? That for sure had to be aliens, right? Coming in at number eight, we have the creepy stranger. And if you guys are liking this video so far and want to see more spooky content, then smash that like button. One forest ranger told the time he was leading a trip to the top of Mount Sterling in North Carolina. He was with eight middle school kids and one co-instructor. Once they reached the top of the mountain, they settled down for the night. He decided to spend the night in a hammock since it was so nice out. That night though, around 10.30 p.m., he saw something approach the campsite. As it got closer, he saw that it was a person. Now, they were in the middle of nowhere, so it was weird for people to be up there. Apparently, this person just stood there watching the camp for 30 minutes. And then he sat down under a tree facing the camp, just staring. The man stayed there until 3.30 a.m. That's when he got up, surveyed the camp one last time, and then left. Okay, what the heck? Like, what was this dude doing? Was he waiting for the ranger to fall asleep so that he could attack? Was it even a human? Or was it a humanoid creature disguising themselves as a human, okay? These are the questions that we need answers to, people. In our seventh spot, we have the humanoid creature. Speaking of humanoid creatures, the forest ranger in this next story might have really encountered one. This happened happened a number of years ago in Fishkill, New York. According to the ranger, the area that they were in was quite isolated in the woods. You have a bunch of cabins on top of a mountain, but each cabin is like half a mile apart from each other. One night at 1 a.m., he was cutting through the woods to get to his girlfriend's cabin when he heard a weird rustling coming from the woods. He was expecting it to be a bear or other creature, but what he saw was far more frightening. A three foot tall humanoid creature jumped out of the bushes and just stared at him. It was standing on its two feet and it had two arms, but it definitely did not look like a person. He tried to get closer to get a better look at it, but that's when it took off. He said that the way that it ran was very odd. It was very mechanical moving and ran super fast. To this day, he still doesn't know what it is that he saw. So I'm gonna go with a lost house elf because uh, his description just reminds me of Dobby from Harry Potter. In our sixth spot, we have the missing friends. This forest ranger shared the time he was sent out to look for a group of missing teens. They were out camping, but they never returned home. So this forest ranger and another went out in the general direction direction the teens were camping in. They were about 35 kilometers deep into the woods when they started noticing some odd things. Like sticks carved like spears sticking out of the ground, creepy things carved into trees, and stuffed animals hanging by nooses up in the trees. Everything was freshly carved, meaning someone had just been there and done that. So that means they were lurking around there somewhere close. They kept on hiking until it was dark and settled down until the next day. The next morning, they noticed a bunch of ripped clothing and shoe prints. They thought, okay, maybe the group of teens were nearby, but just then they got a call on their radio saying that the teens had been found. So now here's what he's wondering. Who did the ripped clothing and footprints belong to? And who created that creepy weird shrine they encountered the day before? Coming in at number five, we have the lost campers. A couple of years ago, this forest ranger was out practicing winter climbing when he came across a tent in the middle of nowhere. He got closer to it and found it had been ripped open and it was badly faded from the sun. He crawled inside and found the typical camping stuff sleeping bag, clothes, dried food, etc. But he also found a newspaper in there dated from five years ago. This tent had been up there for five years. Who knows what happened to whoever was staying in there? Isn't that creepy? Moving on at number four, we have the witch. According to this user, his grandfather used to be the equivalent to a mountain ranger down in Mexico. Well, one night he was out patrolling when he heard the sounds of a baby crying. He looked around but couldn't see anything. So he followed the sound of the cry. This is when it gets wild, people. He's walking towards the sound when all of a sudden something flies up into the air and then towards the mountains. He is adamant that it was a witch. He panicked and ran the opposite direction and got in his car and got out of there as fast as he could. Smart man. Coming in at number three, we have the cage. Okay, this one is super freaky, but a forest ranger was out patrolling the area when they came across a big cage with a full-sized mattress in it. The cage also had a container for water and some canned food, as if they were keeping a person captive inside. Yeah, not an animal, a human. The worst part, the mattress was heavily stained with what 
what looked like blood. Dude, what the heck? Who was in that cage? And what happened to them? And why were they being held captive? I need to know. In our second spot today, we have the search and rescue. This next park ranger was called in to help locate a missing man in his 20s. He had gone hiking and never returned home. Now, when he got the call about this disappearance, it was nighttime, which makes everything a whole lot harder, but also, creepier. So he hiked a few miles and then set up camp when it became really late. At around 2 a.m. he woke up to go to the bathroom when he saw a moving light at the base of a cliff. It looked like someone was flashing their flashlight at him. So the next morning he set off in that direction. As soon as they got there they saw the missing man's body at the end of the cliff. He had fallen 60 feet down. Here's the creepy part. The coroner arrived and said that the man had been dead there for 48 hours. So who was out there shining that flashlight then? Did somebody dispose of his body off of the cliff that night? Or was it the man's ghost helping the rangers locate his body? Either way, I got the chills. And in our number one spot today, we have the thumb. This story by far is the scariest one on this list, but it's also the shortest one. Posted on Reddit by user Homeless Homie, he said, and I quote, I saw a human thumb nailed to a tree. That one sentence is chilling. For starters, whose thumb does that belong to? Where is that person? What happened? And then who nailed his thumb to the tree? Okay, that is so unnerving and unsettling. And uh, that's all the details he left us with. So we don't know if they ever solved this creepy mystery. Number 10, abandoned car. A desert park ranger on Reddit shared a few of their stories that they had experienced while working. One that stands out is their discovery of a burned and abandoned car. When they received the report, they weren't too shocked, as it wasn't a rare occurrence that cars would be stolen and abandoned, occasionally being burned. When they found the vehicle, and as they waited for the fire department to arrive, they were left standing in shock, as it was clear that there was a body left in the front seat of the car. They discovered rope and other strange items in the car, and it was determined that the body had been tied up and killed. The police arrived, but no answers ever came about what had happened there, and they now refer to the area as the haunted site. Number nine, abandoned sites. It's not uncommon to find abandoned campsites in the woods, but these rangers share their stories of the unique, strange, and scary things they found that made them stand out. The first was an abandoned house with a small shed hidden behind it. The shed had a large steel door which had been broken off its hinges when they found it. The windows had been boarded over and covered up, but venturing inside, they found only a queen-sized bed covered with burned sheets. The next was an abandoned tent found very close to the walking trail. Inside was a large stash of food like beans and rice, a sleeping bag, and a lonely teddy bear. Sometimes the stories with the least information and answers are scariest, as they allow our minds to wander and imagine various frightening scenarios. Number eight, search returns strange evidence. A ranger and their coworker were called to head out and search for a group of teen hikers that had become separated from their group. They spent most of their day heading in the direction of where the teenagers had last been seen. Eventually, deep into the woods and their journey, they came across a startling discovery. They found branches which had been carved into spears placed into the ground, unidentifiable carvings in trees, children's stuffed toys hanging from ropes tied to the trees. One thing they noticed was that the symbols in the trees appeared to be freshly carved. As would be expected, the two were spooked, but settled down nearby as night was coming and they had to sleep. In the morning, they discovered shoe prints and a piece of fabric that had become caught on a tree. Someone had been there in the night. The teens were later discovered and the two workers returned back to base, never knowing who had been in the woods with them that night. Number seven, strange creature. A camp counselor in New York made a scary discovery when he was sneaking out late at night to meet up with his girlfriend. It was about 1 a.m. when he heard rustling in the woods next to him, expecting to be faced with something like a bear, deer, or other wild animal. Unexpectedly, a creature burst forth from the bushes towards him. In the darkness, he described the creature's appearance as being three feet tall, standing on two legs, and having two arms, looking like a miniature person. While it can be easy to misidentify animals in the dark of night, I personally can't think of any normal forest creature that would match anything close to this description. 
He then moved towards it and it apparently got scared, running away in a strange manner that the camp counselor described as being similar to doing the robot dance. To this day, he has no idea what the creature might have been. Number six, light on the cliff. An unfortunate part of being a park ranger is having to go on search and rescue missions for missing people and never knowing what state you might find them in, if at all. One park ranger recounts a story of him and his coworker on one of these calls, searching for a man in his 20s who had gone missing. As they spent the day searching with no luck, they decided to set up a camp and rest for the night. At about 2 a.m., he got up to go to the bathroom when he spotted a bright light moving on a cliff a few miles away, saying it looked to be like a flashlight beam. In the morning, they went to search that area and unfortunately found the missing man's body at the base of the cliff. What caught the ranger's attention was a flashlight, similar to the one he thought he had seen on the cliff. So it seems to make sense. The man had been walking with his flashlight and had unfortunately fallen. But it doesn't end there. When the coroner arrived to inspect the body, it was determined the man had clearly been dead for over 48 hours. So how could it have been him shining his flashlight on the cliff the night before? Apparently, another search and rescue team member had been near the area and hadn't seen any other people. To this day, there seems to be no explanation for what that light was. Number five, burned mannequins. Another park ranger on Reddit shared his experience while working at a national wildlife refuge that had formerly been home to a US Army lab site. The site had been completely transformed to become a wildlife refuge, with years of thorough cleanup needing to be done on things like barbed wire fences and barricades before it could be opened. One night, when the ranger was walking deep into the forest, he saw figures in the distance. This caught him off guard, as you're not permitted to leave the trails at all. So who was out there? The ranger announced himself and moved closer. And what he discovered was six mannequins in military uniforms, which appeared to have been badly burnt. Six burned figures standing around in the woods in the dark of night would have been scary for anyone to stumble upon, though apparently he chalked it up to having been part of a fabric test. Still pretty scary to discover though, and to think it was somehow missed in the decade long cleanup of the park. Number four, only resident. A park ranger for a small island was the only year-round resident of the area. The island had no bridges or ferries and could only be accessed by private boats. The island would be crowded in the summer, but in the off-season, the island was only inhabited by the ranger. Walking at night, he was adventuring around the island, seeing if he could hike the entire distance. He saw a flash of white in the distance, thinking it was a herd of the brown and white deer which were local to the area. He pressed forward, before hearing something move again. Suddenly, out of the woods came a six-foot tall man wearing a bright white shirt. He sprinted straight up to the ranger with a strange grin on his face before shouting and laughing loudly, quickly sprinting back into the woods again. The ranger was rightfully terrified because, as far as he knew, he was the only person on the small island. For the next few days, he tried to find any evidence of another person living on the island, but never found any campsite, boats, or other signs of life. Number one, skin changer. One wildland firefighter shares a story that his supervisor had told him many times. Apparently, in Idaho, the crew had been working on a large fire incident and would have to be there through the night in order to deal with it. The supervisor went out on an ATV to get a look at the nearby area, when a large cat, seemingly a bobcat, ran out into the road. The animal stood there and stared at him for a while, before letting out a loud scream and running up a tree nearby the road. While startling, it didn't appear to be any reason for concern. Further down the road, he discovered an abandoned cabin. This was also strange as the land was federal property and there should be no buildings. The house appeared derelict and was boarded up, everything inside appearing incredibly out of order. Unsettled, the supervisor got back on his ATV to head back, but at the exact same place where he had seen the bobcat, a woman stood in the road with a nightgown and bare feet. He asked if she needed help, to which she responded with a scream, before running up the same tree the bobcat had, faster than any human would be able to. After returning, he asked locals about the cabin in the area, recounting his experience, to which they told him that he had likely had an encounter with a skin changer. Coming in at number 10, 
nailed to a tree. So starting us off here, let me just ask a question. How often would you expect to find something nailed to a tree in the woods? But more importantly, what is it that you would think would be the most likely thing to come across? There are a few things that come to mind for me, things like markers on trees so you don't get lost, maybe signs, but honestly the deeper you get into the wilderness and the further you get away from the touristy bits, the less I would expect to see much of anything nailed to a tree. However, I have not one, but two scary stories from rangers that prove differently. The first one comes from redditor homeless underscore homie, and they said that they randomly came across a human thumb nailed to a tree. Which is disturbing on many levels and would definitely make me feel like someone was on the prowl if I came across it. The second comes from Reddit user Overlander and theirs, believe it or not, may even be crazier. Quote, I saw a mountain lion skin nailed to a tree with a partial skeleton below. Did this mysterious person kill the mountain lion in defense and nail its corpse to a tree to scare off others? Like actually what happened here. Nonetheless, I would not want to come across either while I was alone in the woods. Moving on to number nine, a cry. Next up we have a story from Louie92, and while they themselves aren't a park ranger, they start off by explaining that their grandfather used to be one in Mexico and that this was a story he used to tell them when they were young. Quote, one day he said he was patrolling this ranch late at night and he heard a baby crying. Now the land is pretty flat, so he looked always and saw nothing. Maybe some goats out in the farm since they sound like crying babies. As he is walking his route he hears the same sound, looks up in the sky and he swears he saw a witch with black clothing and everything flying towards a mountain. He panicked, ran to his car and drove off as fast as he could. Yeah. No kidding. I mean, seeing the folklore version of a witch riding a broom in the sky would be enough to shake anyone. I wonder if that really is what he saw. Or maybe it was a demon? I guess we will never know. Next up at number eight, a truck. Our next story comes from Redditor Beards Up the Wazoo, and they say the scariest thing they have ever come across while on the job was a truck. But not just any truck. Quote, a pickup truck that had been driven off the 1200 road up in the Cascade Mountains above Washigal. It was totaled. I hiked down to it and checked it out. No signs of injury, so maybe it was just pushed down after being stolen. But behind the truck seat was a used pair of women's panties. I called the cops with its location, don't know whatever came of it. I mean, when I read this, I definitely get nervous. Had it been an accident and someone had driven off a ledge, there would likely be dead people, or at the very least signs of injury left behind. So that coupled with the random underwear is certainly not making me feel better about whoever this truck may have belonged to. Let's just hope it's not as bad as it seems. Coming in at number seven, a secret lab. So when it comes to finding creepy things in the woods, usually we're thinking of cabins, sheds, abandoned campsites. And to be fair, all of that is usually terrifying. But one thing that might not be as obvious is what our Reddit friend Radio STV found several years ago. Quote, I was out in the middle of nowhere and just before dawn I heard this huge boom that woke me out of my sleep. I packed up for a hike and set out towards the sound. After about a five kilometer hike, I found the smoldering remains of what I think was a moonshine still, but it could have been a lab. There was at least one very mangled body, but it looked like one guy got out in one piece. I mean, a potential lab explosion in the middle of nowhere and a mangled body in the aftermath is definitely a scary thing to come across alone in the woods. Next up at number six, lucky day. So next up is a story from a now deleted Reddit account and as terrifying as this would have been, it truly was their lucky day as it could have ended so much worse. One day we're out doing a field test which involves wandering around by yourself, checking out outcrops in an effort to figure out the underlying geological structures in the area. We're on top of this cliff and I'm wandering around near the edge trying to find a way to look at the horizontal layers that I'm currently standing on top of. I find a small, nearly vertical crevice that looks like it will do the trick and I can see a little ledge about 8 feet down 
down that looks like I can scramble down to it and get a good picture of what's going on. So I shimmy my way down without too much problem and jump down to the ledge, landing in a mass of juniper needles and hard white things, which turn out to be lots and lots of elk, deer, and bighorn sheep bones, and lots of shedding tawny fur, and the pervasive odor of cat droppings. Needless to say, I scrambled the heck out of there as fast as my monkey arms would take me and counted myself lucky that no one was home. Long story short, I climbed into an active mountain lion den, then got out as fast as possible. Moving on to number five, human remains. If you watched part one, then you're already familiar with how frighteningly common it is to find human remains in the woods. Which, you know, it's not the most comforting fact, but there you have it. And this next story from standard language is just as scary as any other. Quote, for several years, I worked out in the forests of a country that experienced a genocide in the not incredibly distant past. Several times I found skulls. Once I wasn't watching where I was going, and I stumbled on something soft. I looked down and it looked like a very old sweater had been lying there forever. I poked it with my foot and dug around in the vegetation a bit, and sure enough, most of the skeleton was gone. But it was clear there were bones inside the sweater. Somehow that freaked me out more than the skulls. Now I'm not particularly squeamish, but even so, I do hope that I never accidentally step on a sweater in the woods filled with bones of whoever died in it. That's for sure. Moving on to number four, an animal fight. Our next story comes from Reddit friend Infinis5, and let me just say that I imagine this would be as exciting as it would be terrifying to accidentally happen upon. Quote, we're in the middle of nowhere, no other humans for at least 40 kilometers, and we're hearing this unearthly shrieking sound. We ran out into the forest, heading down the hill towards the lowlands next to the river, and watched as a group of maybe six wolves chased down a bull moose. But then Reddit friend explained explains that another predator was close behind, a full grown male grizzly bear. They continue, quote, I thought I was watching a movie, like one of those things you only see in nature documentaries. We followed from a distance of maybe 250 meters while the bull moose desperately tried to cross the river but it didn't make it. The wolves descended on their prey, dragging it onto shore while it was still kicking and shrieking in agony. The wolves didn't get their prize for long though, as the grizzly was done watching and charged the pack of wolves, which broke up at the first charge, then attacked. The massive bear broke two of the pack against the ground, then the others slinked back into the woods. They didn't go far from the prey's remains, knowing the bear would have its fill and they would have theirs sooner or later. That was the moment I realized realized why we're not at the top of the food chain. Moving on to number two, a strange smell. This next story comes to us from Reddit user I'm Dead Serious, and they start off by explaining that while following a trail on a cold winter night, they suddenly smelled the strong scent of a woman's perfume. But the extra weird part was that they could only smell it in one very particular spot. Quote, I was past it before it really registered. That's odd, I thought. I stepped back. Yes, I could smell it. I took another step, the smell was gone. When I stood in one particular spot, I could smell it, but one step either way, there was nothing, and the trail did not intersect with another. I stepped off the trail into the deep snow, and sure enough, no scent to the left or the right. The night was still, no wind. A chill went down my spine. By this time, I was looking around to see if maybe someone was hurt off the trail, or even if there was a body nearby. I called out, no response. Called again, listening carefully, and I stood there, wondering what to do. And then I carried on, with my hair standing up on my neck, looking back over my shoulder. However, our Reddit friend concludes saying that it wasn't until they were writing this post that they realized there was one place they never looked. And the mystery of that alone would be something that would keep me awake at night. And last up in our number one spot, an arm. As far as the discovery of human remains goes, which is, you know, scary to begin with, this next story from Reddit user Conefish and C might just be one of the creepiest and most 
traumatizing I've read about. Reddit friends says the scariest thing they ever found was a human arm. But the story behind it was even scarier. Quote, I was working for the city park board and a woman had been killed and the a-hole who killed her cut her into six pieces and scattered them around the city. The park is big, but it's within the city and idiot criminals seem to think they're in the Yukon out there. Little did he know, a camera above the parking area for the garden where I worked caught him. The whole thing was grisly. I had to testify as a witness. My worst memory of it was having to leap over the arm while we were waiting for the cops and shoo a kid and his grandma away so they wouldn't blunder onto the crime scene. It took me a long time to get over the sense that any kind of branch or log on the forest could be a person. I still hate mannequin hands and arms. I don't blame them. It's one thing to find a creepy bone in the woods and another to find a dismembered limb that ends with you having to go to court in a homicide case. Number 10, the boulder. This pair of rangers responded to a distress call at four in the morning that had come from a family camping in Joshua Tree. The story they heard from the family was something they likely hadn't expected to hear. One member of the family was woken up in the middle of the night when a pebble fell from a large boulder next to their site and hit their tent. When they got up, they looked towards the boulder and saw a humanoid creature standing on top of it. They described it as very skinny and strange looking, moving in weird ways and its eyes glowing in the dark. They said they couldn't mistake it for an animal since it had a flat face, not like a mountain lion or a coyote. As they watch, the creature seems to go down on all fours, crawling down the rock before ascending it again and standing up. He had originally brushed it off as one of his cousins trying to play a prank, but once everyone had woken up, it was clear his whole family was accounted for. As they called out to it, it ran away, and he shined a light on it and said he can't really describe what he saw, except that it appeared to be naked and had a black mark on its body. The rangers tried to calm the family down by saying it was a mountain lion with mange, but I think we all know that what they saw was more than just a big cat. Number 9. Artifacts One ranger for a coastal park in South Carolina recounts his experience from opening up the park in the mornings. When preparing the park in the morning, you have to go on a complete park tour, which also means riding down the beach. The ranger said that in his two years working there, he would often find turkeys and chickens chained up on the beach, placed there to pass away when the high tide came. They also recounted finding many different strange artifacts that were either left behind or had washed up on the coast, including things like random bones or pieces of clothing. He spoke to some of the other staff there and many told him that this was the remnants of black magic. They also told him not to confuse it with root magic. While root magic is typically used for positive things like asking for love, health, or luck, black magic is generally more negative and usually involves a sacrifice, hence the chickens and turkeys that they had often found. Number 8. Something near the campsite a group that consisted of a park ranger and three botany nerds were hiking in the woods for a few days when they had an incredibly scary experience. Day one went off with no problems, but around dusk on day two, they were startled by the sound of a scream. As they were all pretty experienced, they brushed it off as a coyote and just looked around the area. The next day, however, things got worse as they heard what they described as a tree falling down. As they searched around, they all saw a figure in the bushes looking out towards their campsite. They all started yelling loudly as they thought that maybe it was just a bear that they could scare off. But it wasn't a bear. They saw the figure again, a tall man seeming to be leaning over something and turning to look towards them again. When it stood up, it looked to be over six feet tall. As the ranger raised his weapon towards it in fear, it took off into the forest, apparently faster than any human or animal should be able to run. When they went back to the area to see what the man had been leaning over, they found the remains of an animal, but not looking like it had simply been attacked by some other predator. The group were rightfully scared and packed up camp, leaving the area, fearing what they thought might have been a wendigo. Number 7. No Tracks this story comes from an instructor for a therapeutic wilderness program where he was in charge of the at-risk youth. He was on the clock in charge of the program for 16 days, 24 hours a day. His second year working with the program, he was staying at a campsite with the group, the shelters just being simple yurts. 
When they settled down that night, it had snowed, leaving a pretty thick coverage on the ground. He was woken up at around 1 in the morning when one camper had to go to the bathroom. When the camper returned, he told the instructor that he had seen someone out there wearing a plaid shirt. He brushed it off as when he looked out, he didn't see anyone. But eventually, a few hours later, nature called him as well. And when he was out there, he saw someone standing in a plaid shirt. He quickly grabbed his flashlight to shine it on the figure, but in the split second it took him, the person disappeared. No sign of him anywhere around the area. He woke up another instructor to go and search for the person, but they didn't find anything. The scariest part? They didn't even find a single footprint in the snow. Number 6. Strange Encounter this one is short and sweet, but I think one of the most bizarre and scary on this list for how real it is. The worker was surveying a restoration site near an old trail when he heard somebody walking up a nearby path. He grabbed all of his things and proceeded down the trail, walking confidently so as not to give the other person the idea that he could be easily taken advantage of. When he turned the corner on the trail, he saw a shirtless man swinging a crowbar around wildly. The man made eye contact with him and yelled out, I've got a crowbar, I've got a crowbar. The worker mumbled out a quick, nice crowbar, before turning around and running back to his truck. So no ghosts or mythical beasts in this story, just a terrifying man wielding a crowbar. Totally normal. Number 5. Banjo Audience One park ranger was taking care of two pretty remote parks, about 30 miles out from any occupied homes. And even then, these houses were usually empty during the summer months. One night, he decided to hop into his car and head to one of the darker parks so that he could take in the meteor shower that was going to be happening and also get in some practice on his new banjo. He was sitting on a park bench under the stars playing with the banjo strings when he started to get an uneasy feeling in his gut. No, he hadn't eaten some bad food, he was getting the feeling that somebody was watching him. Questions started to go through his head like, what if someone shows up? This is the burned car park, what if they come back? He continued playing to try and avoid the silence when he heard sounds coming from the bushes and he started to really panic. The sounds seemed high pitch and he started to wonder what reason children could have to be deep in the park late at night. As it turns out, it wasn't children. Instead, three coyotes came running out of the bush. Apparently, they'd been enjoying the concert. Number 4. Philmont Scout Ranch a ranger who worked at Philmont Scout Ranch in New Mexico told his story of what had happened on one of his trips, it being a summer camp combined with a backpacking trek. The group were around Yuraka Mesa. It's in the shape of a skull and has various different legends surrounding it, like it being haunted or even being a portal to the underworld. One of these stories is that at night you can see strange and unexplained lights coming from the top. Well, this ranger had worked there for four years now and never saw them, thinking it was just some crap made up by the other staff. Until one night, a kid pointed up at the mesa and made notice of lights coming from the top. The ranger brushed it off as being the lights of the other group who would be joining them. But when he looked, he realized the lights weren't coming from the trail. They were coming from off to the right behind the mesa, and it didn't look like flashlights at all. They were bright blue. Fifteen minutes later, the other group arrived and the lights were still there, putting away any ideas that it might have been them. To this day, he has no explanation for what the lights could have been. Number 3. Intense Pressure this story comes from a worker who was doing a survey in a park in the interior of British Columbia. Most of the rest of the crew had already gone home, leaving behind just him and his boss together for a few days to confirm coordinates and finish up some mapping. They made their way out to one area on an old logging route, and from the second they got there, he said that things felt off. Fifteen minutes later, they heard an incredibly loud WOMP sound, saying he could feel the pressure in his ears. He looked towards his boss, who also looked incredibly pale, and they heard the sound again, saying the intense ear pressure and chest pressure made him feel like he was being squeezed. They immediately packed up and left, not discussing the event and never figuring out what it was. But he says that it was most similar to the feeling and sound of a giant bird flapping its wings, leaving many people to believe that he had experienced the legendary Thunderbird. Number 2. The Soldiers a crew of about 10 people were out in a park in Washington State building dig lines. They were deep into it, about 60 miles from any other sign of life. As they were walking, they came across a clearing. The weird part was that there were two helicopters there, along with seven fully armed military personnel. They had pointed their rifles at the crew, demanding to know what they were doing in the area. 
They said that they were doing dig lines and had been scheduled to be there, putting their hands up in fear. The soldiers told them to turn around and leave and forget they were ever there. The frightened people said that they were doing government work and they had to be there. One of the military men responded by saying, no you're not, not today, get the F out of here. They weren't going to argue with that, so they turned around and quickly went on their way. I'm sure we've all thought at least once that the government is hiding something from us, and this is a good sign that there's more than meets the eye. I'm not going to tell you they were guarding aliens, but I bet they were guarding aliens. Number 1. Abandoned This one comes not from a forest ranger, but instead from a soil conservationist who spent a lot of time looking at cropland and prairie restorations, saying it wasn't uncommon for him to find himself miles from the nearest road. One time, he was in a pretty heavily wooded area of his county, about a mile from the road, when he came across a clearing. But it wasn't empty. Instead, it was an abandoned playground and school bus, with a rusty swing set and a huge rainbow merry-go-round. While this is creepy enough on its own, he was extra terrified by the fact that the merry-go-round was spinning rapidly in circles, with nothing in sight that would have caused it to move. He called out, and it didn't seem that any people or animals were around the area. Freaked out, he turned around and made his way back. He thought it must have been an old school, so he asked his archaeologist to look and see if anything had ever existed there, but they couldn't find anything about it or why there would have been a playground deep in the woods. Starting us off in our number 10 spot, we have animal corpses. So there are certain things you expect to find in the wilderness, and to be honest, one of the more likely things is dead animals, but not in the way that ripe OTCDXVI found them. Quote, I'm a ranger at Yellowstone. A couple weeks ago, I was exploring the Lamar Valley, about 11 miles from the nearest road, and even further to the park boundary. There in the middle of the trail is a perfectly severed deer head. No blood, no raggedness at the severance. Perfectly intact. This is weird because I have seen wolf and bear spoils, and I used to find cougar prey remains with radio tracking just after the cougar made them, but this was not any of those things. The head was completely uneaten. Eyes, tongue, everything intact. Even the ravens hadn't touched it yet. No catching, no droppings, right smack in the trail. But again, no blood. Even a human doing it made no conventional sense. It was just a doe, so it had no antlers. Plus, why leave it in the trail? It was just strange and creepy top to bottom. Coming in at number 9. A midnight pee. This next one is scary in the way that it could have been a literal life or death situation, but thankfully it's just a crazy story that shiny underscore brine gets to share with all of us now. Quote, my scariest wilderness encounter was at about 2 a.m. while maintaining a fire line on a 300 acre fire caused by a lightning strike. I needed to take a pee and the rule is you don't urinate on fire. So I walked over towards a stump outside the fire line. I was about 50 feet away from the stump when it walked away. It was a black bear. I can only imagine the feeling in the pit of Reddit user's stomach when they realized what was going on, and thank god the bear didn't think or want to attack them. I wonder if they ever peed in the woods at night after that incident. Coming in at number 6. A weird man. This next story about a bone chilling discovery comes from Redditor Senor Puffy Pants, and they start off by explaining that they were in charge of leading a group of middle schoolers and their instructor up to the top of Mount Sterling in North Carolina. However, the first night they saw something that made them question their sanity. Quote, everything around me was rather bright from the moon and from the position I was in. I could see down the trail we hiked to get to the top. I laid there enjoying the scenery and noticed something moving on the trail. Bears are common in the area, so I perked up. As it got closer, I could tell it was a person. We were in the middle of nowhere and there was someone hiking up the trail with no headlamp or any gear. I was just frozen watching this person move closer to our camp. They arrived at the top of the mountain where we were and just stopped. I watched as what appeared to be a man surveyed our camp. He stood there for what seemed like 30 minutes staring at our camp. I had no idea what to do. I waited just staring at the man while he stared at my camp. In the end, Reddit friend said around 3.30 he stood up and went back down the trail he came from, but that he practically couldn't sleep the rest of the trip. Coming in at number 5, The Haunted Site. 
This next scary park ranger discovery comes from user The Reluctant Ranger, and they start off by stating that they are a desert park ranger. Quote, volunteers at one of my parks called us to report a still smoldering slash smoking car in one of our remote campsites. It was normal for stolen cars to get abandoned and burned. We went to look, gawked for a couple minutes while waiting for the fire department. After a couple minutes standing there, it became very apparent there was a body in the front seat. After an additional look around, food wrappers, rope, and numerous other strange items were found. It seems like whoever was in the front seat had been bound and shot. Police came and cleaned it up, but didn't find any answers. We refer to that as the haunted site now. It is the most popular in that tiny little park. Coming in at number four, a stalking cougar. If you grew up near the woods like I did, then you were also probably told on a daily basis to watch out for cougars. And so this next one from Smokey the Marshmallow feels especially terrifying to me. Quote, the scariest experience I had as a backcountry park ranger in Washington state was being stalked by a cougar for a day and a half. I was hiking up an unpopular trail up to an old shelter and had that creepy being watched feeling. I had seen fairly fresh cougar scratches and droppings along the trail, but that's pretty common up here, so I wasn't worried at all. That night I camped at the shelter, which only had three walls and a roof. I felt uneasy all night and hardly slept. At one point I arranged my emergency foil tarp around my sleeping bag so at least I could hopefully hear something if it approached me as I slept. The next day I found fresh droppings and scratches on the trail I had hiked in on. About a mile past the shelter I found a mostly eaten deer in some dense brush off the trail. Cougars often keep deceased prey stashes throughout their territory for later snacking. Now a cougar won't usually tangle with a human but here I am a five foot foot tall 100 pound sack of flesh and bones at least 13 miles out from any other humans. I decided to cut short my three day trip and hot footed it out there. The last two hours of hiking through dusk in a dense forest was the most hair raising hike I've ever had. I didn't know I was even capable of being that hyper vigilant. Next up at number three is a disturbing camp. Next up is a story from Reddit user Genesis Pro Tech, who discovered a situation while they were looking for missing teens that would have made me worry for everyone's life involved. Quote, I head out in the general direction the teens had set off in. We'd been hiking for most of the day and seen nothing. We're about 35 kilometers into the woods at this point when we start noticing odd things. Sticks carved like spears stuck into the ground, weird carvings in the trees, a stuffed animal hanging from a noose up in a tree. This place was nowhere near any roads. It wasn't on the regular trails people would go on in in the area. The really eerie thing was that everything was freshly carved. Somebody had been there within a couple of hours of us and made these things. Mind you, we're still looking for these teens. From there they say that while creeped out, they continued with the hike until they reached a place to camp overnight. However, the next morning when they woke up, Reddit user says, quote, I noticed a bit of shirt that had caught on a small tree and ripped along with some shoe prints. We were thinking, great, maybe we're close to the teens, when a radio call comes through saying that they had just been found 20 kilometers east of us. All those weird things we had seen from the day before came flooding back into my mind and we wasted no time hiking out of those woods. Coming in at number two, human teeth. This next story comes from Reddit user The Copy Paste Life and only gets creepier the more you find out about it. Quote, our park lets kids from school in so they can look for animals in the forest and the streams. One day, a kid finds molars. The teeth looked like human molars, but the teacher said they were deers. I dismissed it and completely forgot about it. But Two days later, they found a corpse with a smashed skull and jaw in another part of the park, and all its teeth were missing. I mean, first of all, how long was that corpse there? Secondly, did they ever find out who this person was? I mean, 
I would not be too keen on coming to work after finding that and having no clue how it ended up there is all I'm saying. Number 10, The Creek. This first story comes from a park counselor who tells of his experience that he shared with one of his coworkers. When taking a hike with a group to the tallest mountain peak in their state, he and his friend decided to go for a quick hike at night to get away from the group for a little while. They were looking at the stars when he heard what he described as the beautiful sound of water. He had this image of a clear, crisp creek stuck in his head and the sudden urge that he just had to go find this creek. He said it was not just an urge, but a need. Since it sounded nearby and the need was stuck in the back of his head, he and his friend silently stood up to go in search of it. As the sound got so loud that it must have been right beside them, but they couldn't see anything, they decided they would go in search of it tomorrow. As soon as they made that decision, the sound and desire to find the creek was completely gone. As they stood there in the sudden silence, he said he could feel the presence of someone watching them, but nobody else was around. The pair silently and quickly made their way back to the camp, unsettled by the experience. When they went back the next day and looked at their maps, they discovered that there weren't any creeks, rivers, or other bodies of water that could have made the sound anywhere nearby. He describes how the night had made them both feel like it was a sinister presence attempting to lure them somewhere, and who knows what could have happened if they had continued in their search for the mysterious creek. Number 9. Ghost Woman One ranger took to Reddit to share his story of a scary prank that became much more than it seemed. He went to a watchtower to cover a night shift due to the large number of night shift workers who had recently been quitting. With a 5 hour energy in hand, he was prepared for the long night ahead. The watchtower was tall with multiple flights of stairs leading to the top, and it was surrounded mostly by thick forests and one small pond. No sounds except that of nature and owls. When he looked out, he saw it looked like a snowman, but with the realization that it was summer, he looked closer and saw it was a kid in what looked like one of those classic ghost costumes made of a sheet with holes cut into it. He radioed his only partner for the night and sent him out to go check out the apparent ghost. When he looked out, the person was gone, and while talking to his partner, the radio suddenly cut off, and he saw his partner's flashlight on the ridge go dark. Things seemed to go completely silent, not even the sound of wind or animals. Scared, he moved towards the stairs, and at the bottom of the stairs he saw a woman, tall, skinny, and dripping with water. Her skin seemed blue, wearing a ruined grey dress, and with milky white eyes and her mouth hanging wide open. He rushed back inside and locked the door, desperately calling out on the radio to his partner. He turned and got startled, seeing the bedsheet ghost standing there. He removed the sheet and found it was just his partner's son, laughing to his father about managing to prank the ranger. He was unimpressed, asking if the woman on the stairs had maybe been his partner's wife. Things grew tense and serious as his partner responded saying that he hadn't put anyone on the stairs. It hadn't been a part of the prank. Number 8. Yosemite National Park Yosemite is a very well known park with a great history, and today's story goes back to the person known as the park's first ever ranger, Galen Clark. When he had been close to Grouse Lake, he heard a loud wailing sound and he reported it. He thought that maybe it had just been a lost puppy or other animal, so he didn't think it was a big deal and wasn't particularly scared. However, when he spoke to a group of people at their camp, they told him that he had experienced a ghost, specifically the ghost of a little boy who had drowned in the lake long ago, and now how at anyone who comes near. Just like that, Galen Clark had discovered what came to be known as the Grouse Lake Ghost. People to this day are still told stories of the ghost and report hearing his cries, many avoiding the area in fear of hearing the sound. Number 7. The Lost Hiker This story comes from a park ranger who works in an area with very dense forests, just north of the United States border. When he signed on to his shift, he got a call for a missing person, not completely out of the usual for the job. It was described as a hiker who had been missing for the last last two days, wearing a sweatshirt and a red backpack. He headed out on his truck to the place the hiker had last been seen, and eventually headed out on foot, as he hadn't found the hiker on any roads. He calls for backup and waits, his partner eventually arriving with his jeep. They made their way to a trail where it was common for people to get lost, as the path splits and goes deeper into the woods. They found a campsite, and after looking around, he discovered that his partner was no longer nearby. He waits around for a while, calling out to his partner on the radio multiple times, but getting no response. Eventually, he decides to make his way back down the trail and sees a guy with a red backpack, matching the description of the missing hiker. He described him as walking strangely, not moving his arms, almost like a robot. The man ignores him as he calls out, but eventually nods slowly when asked if his name matches that of the missing hiker. The ranger puts him in the back of his truck and radios his partner again, this time getting a response. What he heard, however, is not what he expected. His partner tells him that he had found the missing hiker, injured, and he's heading back to base. When the ranger told his 
partner that this doesn't make any sense as he had found the hiker. His partner seemed to panic, saying to lock the truck and grab his weapon, and don't let the man out of your sight. As the ranger cautiously makes his way back to the truck, he finds it empty and badly damaged, no sign of the person that he had found. He sits and waits at the truck, anxious and scared. His partner eventually returns, but he never got any answer of just who or what he had met out on the trail. Number 6. Stairs to Nowhere Have you ever been walking in the woods and seen what is clearly a staircase coming out of the ground and seeming to lead to nowhere? Even if you haven't, there are plenty of people that will tell you that they have. There are many reports of these staircases coming from all over the world. One park search and rescue worker recounts how these staircases in the woods seem to be so common that his co-workers would just tell him not to worry about them, but don't go anywhere near them. The staircases range in age and material from broken wooden steps to modern staircases built out of stone. While some can be explained as being the remnants of an old broken down building, others completely stand out from the area and seem to be in a well maintained condition. Some reports have even come in about staircases that would appear to move in the middle of the night, showing up in different areas than where they had previously been. So who built these stairs and just where might they be leading to? Number 5. Kenai Fjords National Park A frozen park in Alaska, Kenai Fjords National Park is home to many different urban legends and scary tales. One story goes as follows. In the late 80s, two newlyweds were visiting the park to go dredging for gold at a nearby mud flat. However, they got their ATV stuck in the mud. They got out of the ATV so they could attempt to push it out and rescue their vehicle, but the wife unfortunately got stuck as well. And as the tide rose around her and she was unable to escape, she drowned. When the park's search and rescue team arrived, it was too late for them to do anything, as the tide was too high to make any sort of rescue. They had to wait for hours for it to go back down in order to recover her body. They say that in the area, you can hear the voice of a man desperately calling out for help, the sounds of an ATV trying to escape the mud, and the gasps of the young woman fighting for her life. Number 4. Mountain Lion No, this isn't just a story of someone stumbling upon a mountain lion. That would be pretty boring. Well, not for the lion. Instead, this is a story of a scary experience a park ranger had while out scouting for the animals. They had received a lot of sightings, so they went out to search and close off any trails in the area. He was out on his own in a dark forested area of the park around dusk, when he heard what he said sounded like a woman screaming. This wasn't too abnormal, as the call of a mountain lion sounds just like that. He radioed to tell his team that he had heard the lion and was going to go searching to see if he could discover where its territory was. He heard the screaming a few more times all from the same area, so he marked it down and got ready to head back. But then he heard another scream that sounded dangerously close to him. He starts heading back faster, breaking into a jog to get away. About a mile from the base, the screaming stopped. When he looked back, he saw what looked like the figure of a man. As he walked over and went to tell him to head to the visitor's center, he said that the figure took a quote, impossibly long step toward him and let out a scream, just like what he had been hearing and had originally assumed to be the mountain lion. The ranger immediately broke into a run, sprinting back to base and not looking back. By this time, the screaming had moved deep into the woods again. Not mentioning what had just happened, he just told the team that they needed to close the trails in the area and keep people away. Number three, mammoth Cave National Park. If dark, spooky, haunted caves are your thing, for some reason, then Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky is the place to be. With over 400 miles of underground passageways, the cave has plenty of stories and experiences from rangers to keep you up at night. In 1839, the cave was curiously turned into a tuberculosis sanatorium by one Dr. John Krogan. As a dark, deep, unventilated cave isn't really the best place for a hospital, five patients reportedly died while under the doctor's care. Their bodies were laid out on a slab of stone that was referred to as corpse rock, because what else do you call a rock with corpses on it? Rangers and visitors alike can apparently hear the ghosts coughing whenever they walk by the slab. And the most common ghost sighting reported by rangers is that of Stephen Bishop, a servant of the doctor who worked as a tour guide and ranger. He apparently likes to tag along on the tours and apparently shove and grab unsuspecting visitors. Number 2. The Man with Black Eyes Another search and rescue team member recounts this story that happened to them while looking for a young woman who had been separated from her hiking group. They were out late at night as their dogs were tracking the scent, when they found her curled up and scared behind a log. While she didn't have any injuries, it was clear that she had been scared by something. While walking back to base, she kept looking behind her, questioning why a big man with black eyes was following them. The rangers brushed it off, just thinking it might have been a symptom of shock. As they kept going, however, the woman 
got worse, telling the man to stop making faces at her, and even turning and yelling into the forest for the man to leave her alone. Suddenly, everyone started hearing weird sounds all around, an indescribable deep and rhythmic noise. As they were close to the base, the woman turned to the ranger, touching his shoulder and saying, he tells you to speed up, he doesn't like looking at the scar on your neck. The ranger was unsettled as he did have a scar on his neck, but it was hidden under his collar and there was no way the woman would have seen it. He suddenly heard the strange noise right in his ear, quickly rushing away from the scene with the woman to make it back to base. Number 1. Men in Black A man was working on a trail crew, building a new trail away from an eroding cliff. By mid-morning, they decided to take a quick break, leaving the two other members of their crew behind. He suddenly heard a whistling tune. He thought it was his crew, so he called out to them to leave him alone and let him do his business. The whistling stopped, but then just down the hill, he saw two men. They were both dressed in black suits with top hats and carrying canes. They had no water, packs, or anything else they might need for being that deep into the woods. He immediately started walking back to his crew and told them what he saw. They returned back to the area and saw the two men again. One of his crew members yelled down at them and waved, but the two well-dressed men just ignored them, continuing to walk through the forest off the trails, just weaving in between trees. I guess maybe they might have just been searching for an opera in the woods? And we're gonna kick off this list with what I'm just gonna call the zombie. Reddit user love is a love of an axe uploaded this image a couple years back and it's pretty haunting. Uh, they wrote, my uncle has a trail cam at my old grandparents house which are both dead and the house is abandoned. The camera takes three pics every time a motion is detected. This thing only appears in one out of three of the photos. They also elaborated in a comment uh, down below saying, for more info for anyone wondering, my uncle was up there and left. The trail cam caught him leaving in his car completely. The trail cam takes pictures so fast it looks like stop motion if looked through quickly. And this thing walks up six minutes after he left. It's only in a few pics and the time says the thing was only on screen for one second. And the next picture, it's just gone. Never walked out of frame, just went away. And you know what, if all that's true, then this is pretty freaky. Whatever this figure is, does not appear to be normal. Its limbs seem all messed up, its clothes look all ragged. It looks like an undead corpse roaming around in the middle of the night. Number nine, the large creature. This next image was posted to Reddit by user Adjacent Gunman and shows something. It's hard to make out what's going on here, but the user said it was taken on a trail cam on his property and looks to be a very tall creature of some sort holding a coyote by the throat. This second image is a bit more brightened and you can definitely see the thing's eyes pop out a bit more, but it still blends in with the darkness. You don't get a sense of what its body looks like at all. So if it is a sad Watch of some kind, it uh, has some pretty dark fur. Some commenters said it could be a hunter on his property, but the uploader said it's not possible, or at least highly unlikely, as the placement of the eyes beside his cabin would make whatever this thing is about eight feet tall. Now, looking at the coyote's limbs, they look very angular, almost photoshopped perhaps, or maybe whatever the creature holding it is, it, like it's maybe blocking part of its body, I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell. Let us know in the comments what you think. This footage was uploaded to the YouTube channel Jimmy B Trail Cams and shows what looks to be a large hairy creature walking across the screen through the trees. Jimmy B uploads all kinds of trail cam videos in Birch Bay, Washington. There are videos of foxes, wolves, hawks, owls, and this and that's kind of what sells it for me. Like this isn't someone who just seems to be a Bigfoot enthusiast. He just seems to have a passion for wildlife of all kinds. Probably wasn't even trying to capture something mysterious like this, but just happened to. And the footage is not super clear, but for a Bigfoot video, you do see quite a bit. The, the bar is not very high for Bigfoot videos. You see that the creature moves with this classic Bigfoot gait. Its arms hang by its sides. It seems to have like a pretty long strides. Uh, he posted an update after uploading this footage saying four of his eight trail cameras were missing the day after this footage was taken. So that's mysterious. Number seven, the skunk ape. Just recently, this image captured on a Florida game cam was shared online. The image was taken in Ocala National Park in a hunter's food plot and shows some kind of ape-like creature, definitely ain't a deer. And I gotta say, if someone uh, is just in a costume here, good job, it looks pretty convincing. I, I don't look at this image and go, oh, that's, that's a gorilla costume. The fur just looks too 
for lack of a better word, real. And the face looks uh, like an actual animal. The dude who shared the image said, looks almost like it's holding a baby with its fingers on the mother's nose. I can kind of see that, but uh, what do you all think? Let us know in the comments once again. At our number six spot, we have what I like to call too many deer. Now, this image certainly isn't as ominous as some of the others on this list, and I am quite fond of deer. They're majestic, they're beautiful and elegant animals, but there's something a little unsettling about this image. Like, there's just too many goddamn deer in this forest. It looks like a, like a deer army. It's reminding me of Saruman's Urukai, like swarming the forest to capture Frodo here. Right? Isn't everyone else thinking that? Looking at this picture? Everywhere you look, there's another deer. They just go on for miles, it looks like. I guess too much of anything, though, is kinda icky, right? Like, take cats, for example. Adorable on their own, but like only to a point. Too many, and things get a little uncomfortable. The stereotypical crazy cat lady, it's a thing for a reason. I also think the fact that every single one of them is staring directly into the camera makes it kind of off-putting. This was obviously taken with the flash on, so it's a deer in headlights kind of situation, but uh, looking at this picture, I still have a bit of like a, oh God, like, what do you want from me? Kind of feeling. Next on the list, we have the ghost. So take a look at this image. What do you see? Well, obviously there is, once again, another deer in the foreground looking up at something, but just what the hell is that in the background? It's hard to make out exactly what this odd shape is. To me, it looks like a naked Voldemort howling at the moon. It looks ghostly too, only the, the bust is fully formed. The rest of it looks like it fades out, almost like mist. Maybe there's a pond behind the deer and that's what this thing is like maybe submerged in. It's hard to tell, but this is kind of a freaky image. A pale, bald ghost screaming in pain behind a confused deer. I can make out what looks to be a brow ridge, a wide open mouth. Whatever it is, it looks like it, to have a, maybe a gaunt, almost skeletal face. This would actually make for a perfect like black metal album cover. Just throw some overly complex, indistinguishable text on there and, uh, and you're good. Next up, we have the clown. These mysterious images have been floating around online since at least 2010. They could even be, have been taken before. No one is exactly sure. We're not even 100% sure where the trail cam photos were taken. So this could very well be a hoax, but if it isn't and someone's trail cam just happened to snap a couple pictures of some mysterious man in a clown costume roaming around in the forest, then that makes these images very nightmarish. The image was used in a news story about the string of weird clown sightings that happened in the summer of 2016. Anyone remember, remember that? But it was discovered that the image was actually uploaded to the Field and Stream Facebook page in 2010, a well-known hunting and fishing page. So whoever this was, they were donning their clown outfit and heading out to the forest long before that magical clown crazed summer of 2016 that we all miss. Some say he was just joking around. God swallowed him, my opinion. Nope, I reckon he's still out there, clowning around and carrying on. But one thing's absolutely certain, something about this image stumped the internet. That's why it's famous. That's why nobody knows his name. He's the clown who hid. Number three, we have the werewolf. In May of 2022, at the Amarillo Zoo in Texas, one of the cameras picked up this creature at around 1.30 in the morning. Now, whatever this thing is, it was walking around outside of the zoo, so it wasn't likely to be one of their animals, unless something escaped. And if it is an escaped animal, well, what exactly is it? Like a lemur wearing a lion mask? It seems to be walking on its hind legs, so unless the camera just happened to snap a four-legged creature while it stood upright for a brief moment, it's hard to imagine this being a wolf or a dog. Speaking of wolves, though, a lot of folks have been comparing this to maybe a werewolf. And I can definitely see that. It has looks to be pointy ears, it's got a mane of fur on its back. I also think it looks maybe a bit alien, but again, let us know what you think down below. I think if we all put our heads together, we can, uh, we can crack this case. Coming in at second place, we have another ghost. This image was captured in Whiteman Hill in Wayland, New York, and was shared by Kelly Morgan, who found the image on her brother's trail cam. It depicts some sort of ghostly figure roaming around in front of the camera. There's some sort of beauty uh, in this image a little bit. The, f the figure looks like it's 
glowing a little bit. Morgan made a statement saying that her grandmother told her a story about three men who took the life of a 17 year old on her wedding day in 1882. Apparently the girl was buried in a cemetery nearby. So could this image be the tortured soul of that bride wandering through the woods in the dead of night? Or is it just a hoax? And finally, we have the rake. In this clip shared by TikTok user Cryptalker, we see a strange lanky creature crawling through someone's backyard on all fours. It seems to resemble the famous rake internet phenomenon uh, where the most famous creepy trail camera picture comes from. This one here, yeah, we've all seen that image, right? A gaunt, pale, spindly looking creature staring into the camera in the dead of the night. Well, this thing looks kinda like that. I'd say it could be someone just walking around on all fours, but whatever this thing is, it's incredibly thin, way too small to be human. All I know is I don't like this thing. It looks like an even longer, lankier, creepier version of Gollum. How many fantasy movie references did I make in that list? I think like four. I don't know. I don't know how Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings got in there, but is what it is. All right, guys, I will catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.